absolutely. All right, welcome to today's Zoom call. It is the 6th of April, my oldest daughter's birthday. So um, uh, it's a very happy day for me many years ago. So let's get into some details. Remember um, to everybody that the first thing you should do if you have a question is to search for it because on our blog and on our website, we have lots of answered questions and pretty soon on our membership site hopefully next week um, there's going to be more questions answered and actually on the membership site what i did is i put a a little question uh, box that you can actually post your questions in there and i think wow that's a really good question i might even just make a video out of that question so we might make videos out of the questions especially if you think there's good questions for the video and that's where you'll post your questions for the zoom call so instead of emailing the questions in to Connors Clinic at Gmail or to your liaison or to Info at Connors Clinic, just so they don't get missed, you can just put your questions in that box. So it's a really nice little form you can fill out. You just log into the membership site and you'll put the questions in that box. Um, in the meantime, uh, and even after that, I always go to this little doodad um, magnifying glass on our website and you could ask a question and you'll get a whole bunch of different pages where that question might already be answered so that you don't have to wait for the Zoom call. Of course, I love answering questions on the Zoom call, So, um, but if you want to get to a question and answer faster, that's a good thing. My new book, again, is The Seven Phases of Detoxification. Um, that's available as a free download. Um, not that you need anything else to read, but this may help some of your family members or friends that maybe don't have cancer. And it just talks about um, the why we, uh, my philosophy of detoxification isn't just supporting your liver. You have to support all the phases of detoxification. So that is a term that I, um, I made up. So there isn't anything else that you'll ever read about seven phases of detox. You're only going to read about phase one, phase two, and maybe you'll read about phase three detoxification that has to do with liver physiology. Um, I coined the rest of those terms, but I think it's really fitting and it helps put things into order when you understand detoxification. So you can download, it's not very long book um, and it's a free download on the site. All right, let's get to questions. My brother, Bob, had his genetic review Zoom call and uh, it was, and we asked Ann about red light sauna therapy. Could you speak about red light sauna therapy? So sauna, is um, obviously something that we're very big on because the idea of using a sauna is that you are um, taking pressure off of your liver. So when you go in a sauna, the benefits of the sauna is that you're sweating in the sauna. So you're using your skin as a major organ of detoxification, which it is. So by sweating, you are helping getting rid of toxins and poisons in your body. And that can be extremely beneficial. So a sauna to increase your body temperature just to a sweat is huge because it takes pressure off your liver. A sauna can also sometimes, not always, depends on the sauna, depends on the person, can, can also raise core body temperature. Now there's different studies of people doing saunas with infrared saunas and such. Can it raise core body temperature? And, and the studies say yes, um, but the, the truth is, is that every person is different and it may not raise your core body temperature. So um, you can't make those promises with a sauna that it's raising core body temperature, but it's still good for you to use a sauna if you're in there sweating. Now there's other additions that many saunas come with, different light therapy um, that can have benefic benefits. So what's the benefit of like red light therapy? So first of all, red light therapy, the, the, um, there's many different definitions of that. So there are there is laser therapy. So there's the use of lasers um, for helping healing. Um, but when we're talking about them putting different colored filters over lights and having that be a therapy, it's more so dealing with a person's psychology, maybe. I don't know really the 
physiological benefits. I don't know how much that's been proven with different lights. Um, uh, I think it does. I know it has a change in your frontal cortex because different lights, different colors can affect your frontal cortex. And if you go on our blog again and you read uh, or you do a search for parasympathetic sympathetic tone, um, one of the ways that you would calm a person's sympathetics from a functional neurology perspective is to use colored glasses, like even using sunglasses. Um, what's even better is like rose colored sunglasses, mauve colored sunglasses have been proven to decrease sympathetic tone. So red light therapy, there can be some benefits to just slowing your sympathetic. So your sympathetic nervous system, remember, is your fight or flight mechanism. It is housed in the part of the brain called the mesencephalon. So different colors, red, uh, rose-colored, mauve, can slow the mesencephalon down, and that can be hugely beneficial for anybody dealing with immune issues and immune compromise and cancer, you're trying to stimulate parasympathetics. So any way that you can decrease sympathetic tone can be beneficial to then increase parasympathetic tone. So that's where that would be beneficial and it would be great. Uh, the same person had histamine genes. So Ann recommended that he not eat leftovers but freeze individual meal size helpings and thaw them in the refrigerator overnight. Can you please speak about this? So whenever we talk about histamines, it's not about eliminating histamines because that is literally impossible. So um, all foods contain some histamines and the purpose really isn't to, it isn't even to eliminate all histamines if you, if you could, that isn't even necessary. So understand, histamines are in a lot of different foods, and a lot of foods have higher sources of histamines than others. Foods that even have moderate or even low amounts of histamines, the older the food is, um, the more histamines it will have in its contents. So that's the idea of not eating as many leftover foods. But histamines are also made in your body. Your uh, immune part of your immune response is a histamine response. You make all these different cytokines, chemokines, and histamines are in that classification. And they are an immune uh, precursor and an immune stimulant to deal with something in your body. That's why when you're exposed to pollen, you get a histamine reaction. Now, that histamine is made by your mast cells in your body, and then it's cleared through a different gene called your HNMT gene that makes a DAO histamine enzyme that breaks down histamine in the tissues and gets rid of it. But the idea of decreasing histamines in your diet, especially if you have a lot of genes, the DAO genes, not the HNMT genes, you don't make, if you have defects in your DAO genes, you don't make a lot of the DAO enzyme that breaks down histamine in the gut. So by decreasing the amount of histamines you eat, it will decrease the amount of histamine reaction in your gut um, that would require an excess production of DAO enzyme. And if you have defects on those pathways, you don't make enough already. And so it can decrease the inflammation, the overall inflammation in your gut. Um, again, it is not a perfect science because you can't get rid of all histamines. You're just trying to reduce the load. So if you think of histamines as a bucket, when you fill up the bucket too much, it overflows and you can have a hyperhistamine reaction. You just try to reduce the load. Um, here's an article. Uh, from our blog, the low histamine diet, high histamine food list. Um, I have multiple articles about histamine in, uh, in our blog because histamines are a major issue, especially with the COVID and the COVID vaccine. Uh, having mast cell issues, um, you know, can kill people. So um, 
uh, histamines are a player in that. They're not the only player in mast cell activation issues, but they are a player in that. So anything you could do to reduce histamines, the better off it, uh, it is. I have other articles that talk about histamine and different cancers too. So go to this little thing here again and search for histamines and you'll come up with this article on histamines. Next question. We've read a lot and watched your blog videos about blocking EMFs. I thought EMF radiates in all directions. So if so, how does the hedron uh, block EMFs? Good question. So this, the hedron is this little device that you stick on the back of your phone like this, um, and it can help with EMFs. Oh, did you notice what I just said? It can help with EMFs. There is nothing that is going to block EMFs altogether except putting your phone in a Faraday cage. So a Faraday cage um, is just um, anything that completely blocks all electromagnetic function. So we have those little sleeves that you can buy. I think they're 20 bucks on our web store. They're a little soft material sleeve that you can stick your phone in and you could. Uh, fold it over and Velcro it up um, and you literally will block all EMFs coming through your phone, but you will also block all usage of your phone because you the phone won't receive any data from it because it's completely blocked. So, um, so what are you going to do? You can't use your phone then. So, but it's a good thing to put your phone in that little Faraday sleeve because it will then block all EMFs. I mean, when you're at, at night or when you're not using your phone or when you don't need to use your phone, um, some people put them in their pockets and when they put their phone in the pocket, they just slip it right into the sleeve. So they're not, they're not gonna re be able to receive any phone calls. <laughs> they won't receive any texts until you take it off of that and then it connects with the network again and it goes ping, 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 ping. And now you get all these texts or emails or phone missed calls. Um, but that's the only way to give you full protection. The hedron gives you some protection. My opinion, better than the hedron is the safe sleeve. So safe sleeve is the brand name of a, um, a phone case. I just got a new phone a couple of weeks ago and I'm waiting for them to come out with the size safe sleeve. Uh, we had ordered some, I have to check with Dustin to see if we got them in for the S. 21 or S22 or whatever I have. And I think it's the S20, Galaxy S22, the new one. So um, that is the best um, thing short of using a Faraday cage. So you can still receive phone calls and stuff, but literally when you have it in that, in that, uh, in the safe sleeve, which is just a phone case, but it looks kind of, it looks kind of uh, early 2000s-y because it, you know, it's, it's just kind of an older style, but you have to have it that way if you're gonna have protection. So that's even much better than the hedron. So um, I will have a hedron and a safe sleep. So it's just, I mean, the, you know, for the, for the money, it gives you the best protection for something like that. And understand with anything with EMFs, nothing is going to protect you fully. You're going to have EMFs exposure and you just gotta to try to reduce that exposure as best you possibly can. Do you have anything on blood type diets? Is there anything to that theory? These are two different questions. So um, the blood type diets was uh, a book that was put out by Dr. Amaro, I think was his name, years ago, probably back in the 80s. Um, and he used blood types to say that the way we evolved was um, based upon the blood type. We evolved from different, well, I don't know, whatever. That um, uh, That's why a type O could eat meat and a type A doesn't eat meat or whatever it is. And a type B should you know, be a vegan or whatever. I don't remember. I read the book a long time ago when it came out. Well, I have major issues with it because I don't believe we evolved, number one. So it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever um, in that way. Do I think, though, that some people do better on a vegan diet and some people do better on a, you know, they have to eat meat three times a day in order to keep their, their um, blood, um, 
uh, B12 and their uh, red blood cell content high enough and oxygen oxygenation of red, their red blood cells up? Yes, I do. But I don't think it has anything to do with what type of blood you have. So if it's like, oh no, man, I am type A and it says I should be eating meat and boy, I have to eat meat. I think that's just a coincidence. I don't think it has to do with your blood type. That's just my opinion. Um, but I do know that there are people that do much better on different diets. And there's certainly food sensitivities that you have to stay away from, but you need to deal with that. So I always suggest you do a Cyrex test if you really want to know about food sensitivities. And if you have food antibodies, that's what makes the most sense from a scientific perspective in my book is that do you have circulated antibodies to that food or that peptide of that food that then every time you eat that food, you end up having an inflammatory reaction and it possibly causes an autoimmune issue. That's how you should test for it, not based upon your blood type. Next part of that question is also, what preparation do you recommend if I decide to follow through with mastectomy? Well, make sure you contact your liaison. There are some things that we'd wanna do, but it is individualized based upon the, the supplements that you're currently taking. So make sure you contact your liaison. If you wanna make a point with me, do that too. Uh, some of these questions are sent to people's liaison. So I says, Ashley, does Dr. Connors know about Royal Vibe Health Ultrasound? Yes, I do. We heard it's better than the right machine. The lady said that she used the right machine and her tumor grow. She said it didn't go deep enough. Well, I would 100% agree with that lady if she was using most of the right machines that are on the market. So most of the, remember, well, maybe you don't remember, but in a lot of interviews, people have asked me about the right machine and how I qualify the quality of a right machine. And it, uh, the quality of a right machine is based upon, number one, if it doesn't have enough power to go through the person's body, well, it is completely worthless. And that is literally, um, you know, eight out of 10 right machines that are out there. There's one right machine made in, um, in uh, Canada, where the guy is telling people that the right machine goes out 30 feet. And if you tested it, because um, I have a friend that had one and tested it, it goes out six inches. So these some of these companies will just outright lie to you. Um, it's very disturbing. So to me, the most, the best machines on the market are the True Rife and the GB4000, as far as the power output of the machine. If you don't have enough power to get through a person's body, then it's not going to do anything. So I would agree if this person was using, um, you know, the, um, the some of the right machines out there, it wasn't penetrating their body and it didn't help them. Um, so, um, and then, you know, the second quality of a right machine, it has to penetrate the body, has to be programmable. So if you can't put in the frequencies that you want to use, it's completely worthless has to be uh, uh, user-friendly. Um, if, if that's the where GB4000 falls a little flat because it's, it's much more difficult to use. It's much more difficult to lug around. It's a big kind of clunky thing. So um, it's, uh, and then uh, lastly, it uh, uh, has to use a bulb. So a lot of right machines, you're holding little things in your hand. So it's really electrical frequency, it's not light frequency. And there's benefits to that for different things. You can kill amoebas through that and things, but you are not going to really kill cancer. So it has to have those four qualities. Um, back to this, the Royal Vibe, I'm not going to diss any other equipment out there, but um, an ultrasound machine has very has a lot of efficacy for different things. Um, when I did a lot of uh, musculoskeletal issues, I had an ultrasound machine in my office. I always loved ultrasound. It was really good for for uh, cysts in uh, um, uh, in uh, tendons. It was really good for uh, uh, other musculoskeletal injuries, muscle injury, and such because you're literally putting in these through these sound waves and breaking up the tissue. Um, but to me, to use ultrasound with cancer, it's to, I, I just don't, I just can't wrap my mind around the physiology. I mean, to me, you could, you have the potential of spreading the cancer. 
um, you don't want to break up the possibility that the body is going to wall off this cancer and stop it from growing, and then you're going to break it up. I just, to me, it doesn't make any sense why you use ultrasound for cancer. I just don't understand that. Can you use PEMF and Rife machine at the same time? Absolutely, yes. So PEMF is an electrical frequency, totally different wavelength, totally different spectrum than Rife light frequency. So yes, 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 I used to do that all the time. So um, you can use them both concurrently. There's no harm in that at all. A little bit of that too. Just got off the phone with somebody today, was concerned about using Rife. Of course, they had, they aren't a patient of ours yet. They're concerned about using Rife when they had an implantable device. So when you have an implanted device, um, like a defibrillator or something like that, or uh, one of those uh, blood sugar monitor things, um, then you do have to be careful with the PEMF. Um, Rife is not going to hurt any implantable device, any electrical device. Not, you're not going to have issues with the Rife. You may with the PEMF, so you do have to be careful with it. You can technically still use PEMF on your legs if you have uh, peripheral neuropathy or something like that, and you have a defibrillator. You can still do it on your feet, but you do have to be careful on the intensity that you use it. You certainly wouldn't do it near your heart. If you don't have a pacemaker or something, you could do the PEMF right over your heart. It's actually really good for you, but you don't want it to interfere with the implantable device. Long question. We know that cancer uses glucose to feed itself. Yes, it does it's, uh, very often. And if that is totally cut off, we understand it could switch to glutamine. Well, let's make sure we understand this. Um, cancer can be feeding off of glutamine and methionine, which are amino acids right from the get-go and are not feeding really off of glucose at all. So um, that's why we test for that. So, but if we block the cancer from using glutamine or let's just say one fuel source, it seems that it can use another pathway, maybe fatty acids. It can use fatty acids, but usually doesn't because it takes so long to break down fatty acids to become a fuel source. So because of cancer's high metabolic rate, it typically will not use fatty acids. Um, but it can, so that's why we test for that. And sometimes we're testing for this particular foods. And let's say pork comes up and red meat comes up. Well, it's quite possible that it's actually the fatty acids in pork and red meat and not so much the glutamine and methionine that is altogether possible because we're testing the food test kit, not the specific macronutrient. So that is quite possible. So if so, how would we know to stop this process? That's where you just get another cheek swab and make sure you check on there that we check the diet um, so that we'll make sure that we're doing that. Uh, we are seeing weight loss that looks to be quite unhealthy. We don't want that. So make sure we check this. I don't know who asked this question, but whoever it is, um, maybe you should just schedule a call with me um, or you can send it in on a cheek swab. Now we're, we're putting on the cheek swab form, make sure you are knowing that on the cheek swab form, you're sending the cheek swab to our new address. So if you have to jot this down, make sure you are sending it to our new address. This is our warehouse actually. Um, this is the fastest way to get it to me. Um, and, uh, Uh, so that's our new address. So make sure it comes to this address. It's on all of our stuff now in the, the back office that you're going to be. So those that just joined us, we're going to have the new cancer membership site for all our patients up by next week. And um, you're going to get an email from us saying, hey, you're going to get an email in a, in a, uh, today from uh, our uh, site at at uh, HubSpot that um, will give you access to the new membership site. Then you just have to use that email that we're sending you to. That's your main email. Use that email as your username. Uh, don't try to use a different email because you won't 
we allowed in. That's how the membership site works, and that's how we keep uh, patients out of it. Um, and then you create your own password. Um, and then you'll have access to our new membership site, which has a whole bunch of information um, that isn't on our website and has all of our Zoom calls. So that's how you'll be able to get our Zoom calls. This recording will be up in that tomorrow. And also, uh, 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 all our all our past Zoom calls will be in there too. And you'll be able to ask questions. So, all right, let's open it up for questions. We already had some come in, it looks like. Oh my goodness. Yes, we did. That one we got answered. That one we got answered. Uh, not sure how I can, how can I diagnose shingles and how can I treat it at home without the use of antibiotics? We have a shingles protocol. So make sure you contact your liaison and we can get the shingles protocol out to you. Um, it works, works pretty good. It's not perfect, um, but about 70% of the time it really drops the, the symptoms down to, you know, really fast. So. That Chico's protocol I've used for decades with people. So uh, next, what is the best method to rid THC from my system? I currently use it for pain and sleep. Um, it's, it's basically the old adage, dilution is the solution to pollution. So in this case, THC would be considered the pollution and you just have to dilute it. So water, um, supporting your liver, coffee enema, uh, castor oil packs over your liver, just hot packs over your liver. Go back and download that seven phases of detox book to help you understand that. Make sure you're having good bowel movements. Make sure you're uh, using some binders to grab onto it in the gut so that you get rid of it on the system and you don't reabsorb it. Um, make sure you're not constipated. Um, so those would be the key things to do to get rid of this. Next question. If we massage the castor oil pack on the liver, kidney and gall bladder before using the sauna, can the heat cause detox of these organs and be beneficial? I think the question is if you use the castor oil pack on your liver and gallbladder and such, and then you go in the, can you do it in the sauna, is it? Or before you do the sauna, honestly, I think you could do it. You could do it in the sauna. You could do a castor oil pack on your liver um, in the sauna. You could do it um, before you do it in the sauna. Absolutely, that's the whole idea. of The castor oil pack is you're using heat. So go back and look at the castor oil pack information in your binder, or look at on the on the website again. You can search for it right there, um, but. Um, search for castor oil packs in the idea of the castor oil pack protocol is you're putting heat over the castor oil pack. Um, what is the evidence for using any of the CBD or THC to treat cancer? Oh boy, there's, um, there's a lot of evidence that's coming out. There's more and more studies coming out. So I'd suggest you just do a Google Scholar search on that. Um, most of it's going to be um, based upon using it to help with symptoms of, of uh, oncology's use of chemotherapy. Um, but there's a lot of articles if you search for them on the use of it. Uh, as far as using like Rick Simpson oil to treat cancer, you're not going to find really, I don't know how many articles you're going to find on that because. Uh, I, I just doubt that there has been any studies that have you know, that got through IRB to do Rick Simpson oil. So I doubt that we're going to find any studies on that. So that evidence is all anecdotal. Um, and I don't believe that you know, a lot of things you'll read about anything with cancer is that this cures cancer every time. And there's, of course, that's just nonsense. Not what it is. So, um, but uh, that's why we test for it. We test for whether we think it's going to work or not because it doesn't work with everybody. Okay, what's the difference between the five daytime right frequencies in my folder? Oh, it's just for ease of use. So there's five shorter ones in 
this person's folder. I didn't create five shorter ones for everybody. But in this case, I did um, uh, just for ease of use, because typically if people do not have any shorter programs in their program, uh, uh, in their folder, then I tell them, if you're going to use it during the day, just run that night program again. Um, just, just for ease of use. I would cycle through those. If I created five of them, then they're different, uh, slightly different. So just use, just cycle through them as best you can remember. There's no, there's no sequence though, so don't worry about that. So boy, I read the right today. Two, I did the first daytime program. Oh, I can't remember what I did yesterday. It doesn't make any difference. Just run one of them. Try to keep your sequence and so. That's not all the questions. So, any other questions? Can you discuss you know, the grounding difference in your philosophy versus Mike's philosophy? So the grounding pads um, that are out there, uh, the grounding pad that came with your Rife is, um, uh, is, a, a, is for the ion pro way. So I'm gonna pull up a grounding sheet and put that up on the screen. So get that up here, pull up the picture. So a grounding sheet is something I think this person is talking about. So this is our grounding. Oh. Let's see if I can do it this way. Uh, the grounding or earthing sheet that we sell is, looks like that. So it is um, a cloth material that you would put on the lower half of your bed. Across This would fit across a, a king bed. The lower half, I mean, from your buttocks down to your feet. And then you'd put the fitted sheet over the top of it. So you would, it would be able to stay in place. And then you plug it to with this little plug thing. You plug it to that little thing. And then you put this either in the ground of the Rife machine, because that goes back to the ground, or you could plug it into the ground of an outlet, the bottom of the of a three prong outlet, so your outlet in the wall has two uh, prongs on the top. That's positive and negative. And the round prong on the bottom, that's the ground. This little yellow thing is simply a ground tester to see if your outlets are actually grounded. Because if it's not grounded, then it, this thing's not going to do anything. And the reason why that we include that in there is because often people actually have a three prong outlet in their wall. So they think they have grounded outlets, but the electrician who connected it never actually connected it to the ground, which is really unfortunate. And I've had multiple patients that that's happened to. I paid lots of money to have their house rewired for the electrician, just did a shoddy job. So if it was properly inspected by an electrical inspector, they would have probably caught that. So, um, but that is how you use a grounding sheet. Now, I know there's philosophies out there and I think like it's for right believes that you should use it. Everybody should use a grounding sheet and you should use it on your whole bed. But understand your right frequencies are gonna be attracted to the ground, to this grounding sheet. So if you are using a grounding sheet, and you have it on your whole bed, and you have your bulb on your tummy, and you're laying on your back, well, there's no harm, no foul, because those frequencies are going right through you to the ground. But even at that, think about it. 
We want these frequencies to go throughout your whole body, not just mainly through your chest to the ground. We want them to go up to your head. We want them to go down to your feet. Um, so if you have a ground that's on the full side of the bed and you roll over to the side and the bulb falls right next to your sheet, uh, but maybe it's even still touching your body, you're going to lose a lot of those frequencies right to the ground, right to the grounding sheet, back through that wire, back to the outlet, into the electrical system, into the grounding rod, into the ground. So um, if you use a grounding sheet, this is my philosophy, you only use it on the lower half of your bed. If you use it on the lower half of the bed, usually you're going to be just fine unless you are um, putting the, your bulb way down low on your body and it's way down by your femur or something like that. But I'm hopefully everybody's listening to my instruction and you're kind of snuggling with that bulb up at your chest all the time. And it might fall down by your side, but it's not falling down by your leg. So if you use a grounding sheet, I think you should use the grounding sheet only on the lower half of your body. You're still getting the benefits of the grounding, but you're not losing the frequencies. So the benefits of the grounding are immense. I, I would tell people to read the book Earthing. Um, that can help you understand um, that you know, we pick up, we are basically antennas and we pick up uh, different charges. You're picking up a positive charge all the time. And I don't mean positive by good, it's a positive charge. And then you have to disperse that charge. And the best way you do it is you go walk around in the grass with your bare feet and you're going to disperse that charge and you pick up electrons from the earth. That's the benefit of pets. That's the benefit of horseback riding. A horse or you know, a dog is running around, grounding itself on the earth all day long if you let it outside. Horse is standing on the ground, grounding itself. It's a great conductor of electricity. That's why horse therapy is so good for autistic kids, for abused people, um, for alcoholic addiction people. It could just settle your brain down. It all has to do with grounding. Um, so it's, horse horses are nice too. So um, they're just like cheap big giant dogs. So, um, but that's what earthing or using a grounding sheet can do for you. You can actually use these grounding sheets on your chair, let's say your desk chair that you sit in all day. Um, I used to have one plugged in at my chair before we moved um, and you have it plugged into the wall. Then. So you're basically grounding yourself all the time. So it's very beneficial. Oh, I'm gonna be going with these questions. I wrap the right lamp with a lar dark fabric and put it under the top sheet next to me in bed. I am still getting the results. Yep, you are. So you could put the, your rife, uh, your rife machine won't penetrate um, putting a tube sock on it or something like that to keep you from being blinded by the light at night. Um, it won't penetrate your body. It's not going to do any good. Your true right should really penetrate that just fine. What's the difference between natural sweeteners? Are some more harmful than others? I get conflicted in info. How does sugar in fruit affect cancer? How does monk fruit, xylitol, stevia affect cancer? Um, yeah, it is very confusing. So when we test for things, we test if sugar is even a big driver in your cancer. If it is, then we tell you that. Um, well, if sugar isn't the driver in your cancer, um, is monk fruit? Is that no? Then these won't be either. Um, if sugar is a driver in your cancer, can you use monk fruit? Well, it still is sugar, so you still have to be careful with how much you use of that. Is xylitol a driver of your cancer? If sugar is, no, xylitol is not sugar, so it's completely different. Um, that's a type of sugar alcohol. Um, and is stevia a driver of your cancer? No, stevia is not a driver of your cancer. We've never seen that to be a driver of your cancer. So um, it, it's, it's hard to know, okay, well, how do I know what I should be doing, blah, 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 because there's so much information out there. 
Um, the bottom line is, is just try to use common sense in that you're not doing simply one thing all the time. So you're doing a mixture of different things can be very beneficial. It's like, it's like the old adage that I used to say for years is that um, we were really created to eat in season. It doesn't make any sense to me that we could eat apples every single day of our life. Um, that's not the way God made it. Think of, think of how God made things to come in season. Yes, we're supposed to be able to, to pick apples and put them in cold storage so that we could maybe stretch out that season to maybe six months instead of only two months. Um, but to that we could get stuff from another part of the world that is now that's in season for those people and we could keep eating them think about that. Maybe that's not really that good for us. Maybe we should have this rotational diet where we're not eating the same thing all the time. So even with things like that, I think that's why you get conflicting data of things like this. Is this, is monk, monk fruit is good for you. You should eat monk fruit as your sugar substitute. Um, but then you get data that says, well, monk fruit isn't good for you. Well, I think it's because it's not good for you all the time. And so having mixing things up can be very beneficial. I think there's just a lot of wisdom in that so that you're, you're doing more of a rotational diet. Um, and you don't have to follow like the eating in season where all, oh, well, normally apples wouldn't be in season here. So I'm not going to eat them until they come into season, but just rotate them. You're not eating them all the time. I mean, some people get in a habit where they're eating bananas every single day. Maybe that's not such a good idea. I don't know. I'm just saying, just think about it. What happens if you do not use the grounding sheet when the rice machine is running? Use the grounding sheet when the rice machine is running. I don't use the grounding sheet at all. So understand on my bed, I don't have a grounding sheet. So, uh, and that's why we don't push selling the grounding sheet. So um, we have them, you can buy them from us, um, but we don't ever push them. You never hear us talking about everybody should get a grounding sheet because I don't think everybody should get a grounding sheet um, because I think there could be misuse of it and you could lose a lot of the frequencies. I'd rather have you get the frequencies while you're sleeping than getting grounded. You can ground yourself during the day. Does the more color and sediments indicate effectiveness of the food foot bath? Um, the answer is maybe. Um, so I'm ne I've never been a big fan of saying, oh, wow, look at the brown in the water. It must be coming out of my liver or anything like that. I know there's charts on that. You can Google them. I just don't think they're accurate. I just don't believe that fully. I, you're not doing the foot bath necessarily to pour all this gunk out of you. You're doing the foot bath to run different frequencies that can be beneficial. And yes, it may pull some gunk out of you too. So don't be hung up on that. Do metal coils in your mattress interfere with the right machine? No, they don't interfere with the right machine at all. Um, they can not interfere with some things, I suppose. I mean, some people that are highly sensitive to electromagnetic radiation, you think, well, maybe that could be causing a problem. I don't know. Um, I think different people have different sensitivities that you, they do need to address different things like that. Um, some of the new mattresses, like those purple mattresses and those memory foam mattresses, I think there's maybe um, you got to look at the dangers of how those are made. I know there's one company that's not the purple company that makes an all natural, non toxic. Uh, I don't know what they use in it. I know their daughter has bought that. She's really liked that. But you got to look at the toxin things in the mattresses and stuff too. I think that's even more of a danger. The um, different um, fire retardants that our uh, government has forced companies to use in things like that are highly toxic, cancer-causing things in themselves, uh, and you have to be careful of those as well. Should I take Lugol's solution, 2% iodine, to help with my cancer? Um, if you haven't gotten your binder back, um, you um, will see if that tested or not. You can't really hurt yourself with Lugol's except by take, or you can by taking too much of it. Personally, I'm not a fan of Lugol's solution. 
I'm more of a fan of kelp based iodides. So if you're going to use iodide, I'm more of a fan of kelp based iodide because it's more of a whole food based iodide. I think it's just a better iodide solution than potassium iodide. So, uh, but uh, typically uh, taking iodide, there's really not a whole lot of negatives. So if you have that and you take, you know, low doses of it, you know, standard dose of it that's listed on the bottle, I don't see any problem with that. What type of programs that use a different bulb? Yes, why is that? What type of programs that use a different bulb and a grounding mat? Oh, you know, are there types of programs that use a different bulb and a grounding mat? So if you look at the, the program in the right, it'll show pictures of a person using a different bulb and using a grounding mat. Maybe it'll even say that's what you should do. And there's some applications that that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the rife on my tooth. Maybe I wanna put a grounding mat on my upper back so the frequencies are going more directly right through me to the grounding mat. So you can think of it that way. The grounding mat is gonna attract the frequencies. So draw a line between the bulb and the grounding mat. That's gonna be the general direction of the frequencies. Not all of them, but the general direction of the frequencies. So strategic use of a grounding mat can be beneficial, I guess. So if you think of it that way, you can, you can understand that. Should you use a different bulb? Well, the hammer bulb is one of the strongest bulbs. There's the double bubble with the screen back. That's a little bit stronger. Certainly can't use that at night, um, it, but it is stronger, especially if you touch it to your skin. So there's, there, I mean, we have multiple bulbs that the clinic here, but honestly, most time we're just using the hammer bulb. We at home, I only have the hammer bulb. So um, you don't need to understand. I love Mike at True Life, but he is in the business of selling things. So you don't need to get all those other bulbs. That's not important. Can you use those pro programs even with the bulb that you have with no grounding event? Yes, 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 yes. So um, for those of you that are new to this call, you're also new to the right. So when you start using your right, you want to make it, it's, I, again, I've told everybody, it's not a panacea of all disease, but it should be your first go-to thing for everything. So, oh, my child's got an earache, run the ear infection programs. Oh, my daughter's got a little sore throat, run the strep programs on her. Um, some of them are short, some of them are maybe an hour or two long. As long as they'll sit there, run the program. Use that for your first go-to. Think of it as your medicine cabinet that you should use as your first go-to on everything. So um, this might not fix the problem, but certainly it's going to help, especially if you, um, you know, add other things like nutrition and things to it as well. You don't be afraid to use the, the right. You cannot overuse it. You'll never burn out your bulb. Um, you're not going to have a problem with it. I told you my, my uh, two rights at home. One is now probably going on three years old, and one is got to be 11 years old now. So I've never had a problem with it. It's a constant. Any other questions? Can you use the right on anybody, any age? Yes, you can use it on a little baby. You can use it on a pregnant woman. Yes, you can use it on everybody. Two rugs don't make a right. Like the way this guy thinks he's a dad. You know, you can tell it's quality. Quality there. All right. With that, I think we'll bid adieu. Thank you guys for being on uh, tonight. Again, you can email your questions in, and soon, once we have the membership page, you can do it right on. All right. I'll be praying for everybody. I ask that you guys keep praying for us, pray for our protection, pray for just um, our health and safety. And we really pray for you. Oh, I almost forgot. Please, 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 if you haven't done this, can you guys please email us a picture 
Um, it could be you, it could be your family, but it's gotta be you in there. It's okay, so that, don't just send us a picture, you don't. So send us a picture, because we're putting up a brand new, big giant magnetic prayer board in our office, and I want to get everybody's picture up there for our prayer board. So please email it to info at Connors Clinic, I-N-F-O at Connors Clinic. I will get it to print it, we'll get it up on the prayer board. Thank you guys. Love you all.